Assalamualaikum. My name is uh, Dr. Hassan. I would like to share my thoughts on Pakistan's budget and how we are moving forward in terms of our uh, economy and its progress. So, discussion around budget is is useless without understanding our uh, real economic model and what it is. So our real economic model uh, revolves around a few things. Uh, one of those is our undocumented economy and poor tax collection. Then uh, basically there was another key factor which was large current account deficit. Then obviously uh, you know there uh, we have our real policies which supported you know fake accounts, TTs, money laundering in the past. Then obviously there is strategic government support for high level corruption and uh, you know there was uh, you know uh, a government uh, policy that they would keep taking loans without paying them off so you know your debt burden was uh, increasing and debt servicing cost was increasing then obviously uh, you know, this was further compounded by government policies uh, that supported corrupt state enterprises like, you know, you kept pumping money into railways, PIA, WAPTA and all the corrupt government departments and you got nothing out of them, you know, you, you did not got good services out of them, you, you did not got, you know, any um, significant support for economy out of them. Then another key policy that has been in place for last 30 years has been um, our reliance on IPPs. So we paid IPPs whether they produce electricity or not and we, you know, kept on, uh, you know, doing agreements with them uh, with ever increasing cost per unit uh, of, electric, uh, of electricity. So, you know, there was corrupt state policy that, uh, you know, we are not going to build any Hydel projects and we were just going to throw money at IPP. So currently we are throwing probably over uh, or around 2 trillion uh, rupees, uh, I don't know, it's per year or it's per five years. So that's uh, the amount that we owe them at, uh, um, at current. So maybe uh, it's going to be like, you know, uh, 600 billion rupees per year or something like that. So this is the, um, uh, you know, another uh, key corrupt policy uh, uh, that we are going to pay IPPs uh, and we are not really going to put any real money into building hydro projects. Then obviously we are going to give lots of subsidies to sugar mafia and, you know, we are uh, going to basically uh, turn a blind eye to uh, you know floor mafia and so on then in the past there was another corrupt policy that we are going to uh, keep the dollar price artificially low so that you know uh, the corrupt people can buy dollars from the market at as low a price as, as possible while state bank was borrowing dollars and then pumping those into the market to help our corrupt elite buy dollars at the cheapest price. So this was, you know, kind of subsidy for our corrupt uh, political and, you know, civil military elite who were buying dollars and then sending them abroad. So uh, these were all uh, the corrupt policies in which your economy was working. So, and uh, in many cases, it is still working like that. So I would look at our corrupt uh, policies that uh, you know that are our actual uh, economic model so for last 70 years the first corrupt policy that we are going to talk about is our undocumented economy and poor tax collection so what we have done is we have never brought our traders our services sectors into the uh, you know documented economy and 
you know if somebody sells property or you know movable or immovable property like car or plot or so on the uh, or i mean if uh, you are a trader and you are making large payments uh, then you do it uh, through large currency notes you do it in cash and government facilitate you by you know uh, issuing ever higher uh, currency notes like 5k notes and so on you know the laborer does not need a 5k currency note he he earns like you know 1000 rupees or 1500 rupees per day or maybe less than that maybe 600 or 800 per day so why why do we need 5k currency note the 5k currency note is there to help support cash economy it is there to make sure that we have undocumented economy at the same time you know you are not giving adequate power uh, and free hand to FBR to basically bring all these people into the uh, tax net. That means that, you know, all the taxes have to be paid by, you know, salaried clause and documented economy. And that's a corrupted policy, you know, uh, it's just, it, you know, it's the corrupt state that wants to take all the Jews from the documented economy, from the salaried class, uh, and you know, uh, support all the uh, the big guns in agriculture, in trade, who who basically don't register for tax, uh, they don't file um, uh, tax statements, and they stay out of the tax net. Uh, and government facilitates them. If government wants uh, to document economy today, they would just withdraw 5K note first and you know, that would force at least some of the people to do, uh, you know, uh, their large transactions through banks, through digital channels. Uh, and, uh, you know, if government feels that, you know, uh, they have not documented, um, uh, you know, sufficient portion of the economy, then they can probably withdraw 1000k note as well. And that probably would make sure that probably we can a document over 70% of the undocumented economy. So, you know, all these doctors, hospitals, uh, you know, other people who, who are earning large amounts of money, you know, they, they would then be forced to, uh, you know, carry out transactions, receive payments, make payments uh, through, you know, banking channels. You don't want to do it, so you will never take these steps. So. It's the government that is responsible for poor tax collection. It is a state policy to leave a large portion uh, of, uh, uh, you know, of our economy as undocumented. And PTI has so far followed the same corrupt policies that were being followed by Zardari, Nawaz Sharif, and uh, Musharraf, and all the others in the last 70 years. So there is no change here. Then we uh you know look at another key sector which is uh you know uh, our large uh, current account deficit pti has done you know really well in this area in uh, you know less than two years i would say in less than one uh, in probably one year or more uh, that uh, they have tried to tackle it they have brought down the current account deficit to less than three billion dollar which is quite good this also means that, you know, they have replaced a lot of our um, imports with, you know, local manufacturing and that this has generated a lot of activity and, uh, you know, it has um, generated lots of jobs uh, for our people. So this is quite good and it has, you know, saved us a lot of money, you know, previously we needed, uh, you know, if we did not have, uh, if we had not replaced that uh, with our own um, uh, you know, with our own manufacturing and production, then probably we would have lost another 17 to 20 billion dollar uh, just in that area.